Hey, it's Bill Miles, photographer, director, and creator of Visual Media Mastery. It's your place to come if you're an entrepreneur looking to level up your video, livecast, and photography for higher engagement and conversions. Today, we're going to do a little quick lesson in lighting, how to light better for your video and your live stream and your photography. Just a quick little lighting lesson. Lighting is the most important and perhaps least understood part of the mood that you set for your shoot and also for how flatteringly you are rendered. So it's important to pay consideration to it and these few easy tips should help you level up your game. Number one, choose a broader source. The size of your source and of course the kind of source makes a big difference uh, in, in the quality of the light. But I wanna talk about the size in particular, okay? Uh, when you have a big light source, um, you get a softer quality of light than if you have a small light source. The most extreme example, of course, is like the sun, which is a very tiny spotlight effect. And you get these hard shadows. And then the opposite of that would be an overcast day where you have a very big, broad source of light, right? It's very flattering, it's very even. So I'm gonna show you just an example um, one source I encourage you to use if you don't have other lights, and even if you do, but natural light can be very beautiful. So using a window light is, of course, a very common way to do that. So if you position your camera in front of a window so that you are receiving the light from the window, um, it can be very beautiful. But you want to get as close to that window as you can, and it will be quite a different effect than if you are distant from that window. I'll show you a little bit. If I come over here and I'm close to the light source, you can see that the light is much brighter on me. It's much softer on me, right? Than if, for example, I step back and I'm over here. Now the light is much more distant uh, and doesn't have the same impact. It doesn't have what we call fall off. That's uh, the degree to which the highlight and the shadow side changes. That's what gives texture and mood is fall off. So when we have a bigger source, which and this window effectively gets bigger as I get close to it, relative to my face, the window is getting bigger as I get close to it, it becomes a softer source and the fall off from highlight to shadow is more appealing. Again, I'm just going to show you as I get away, relatively speaking to my face, that window has gotten smaller, the source has gotten smaller. One little extra tidbit of uh, information about lighting, you may have seen in the background here that we have this white panel back here. That's actually a piece of diffusion. It's kind of in a frame, but it could easily be a bed sheet hanging outside the window. And the reason we've got that there is there's sunlight that's happening out there. Right now it's behind the clouds, but it's been coming in and out. When the sunlight's there, the light is too bright behind me. So that softens that sunlight and creates a nice, broad, diffused source. Now you could also use that uh, for your main light, right? So if I were by this window and the sun is coming in, it's super bright. Take a bed sheet, take a white silk is what we call them, uh, but some, some sheer white fabric. It could be a, uh, you know, like a shower curtain, something like that, and put that over your window. So when the sun comes through, as it is right now, uh, it just softens the light and makes a big soft box, basically. Now, I'm not using that as my main light. We're using that to soften the background, but that gives you the idea. So you can see that here on the floor, you've got hard light coming in. Behind me, it's soft light. There's really no sense of, of source of light coming in there. That's because that diffusion is killing that behind there. So now I'm going to show you how that might apply to soft boxes. It's really pretty simple. A lot of you use soft boxes to, to light yourself if you're in your office or your studio or, or wherever it is. And it's, it's quite simple to just change the size of your soft box. So this is kind of a standard size soft box that many people might have. This is actually in the form of a, a long rectangle. It's called a strip bank, um, which I like to use. But it's a small or a medium small soft box. Simple as that, right? So you might want to consider a larger softbox. And a larger softbox is going to give a broader source on your face. It's going to be more flattering in terms of wrinkles and so forth. The shading will be softer. I generally encourage you to get the largest softbox that either your budget or your space will allow. Or get a couple different sizes. 
uh, because you'll find that the larger your box, it will take a little more light. In other words, you'll need a little more light to pump through it to make it as bright but it will give a very pleasing rendering look. The smaller box can be great too, um, but it is different. So I encourage you to get the bigger box that you can. If you're by a window, get close to it, make that window as broad a source as it can be. Okay, so we just talked about the, the size of the source and how that can impact the way the light wraps around you and how flattering it is. A corollary to that is the proximity of the source. That is how close the light source is to you. So if this window, as I demonstrated earlier, is, is quite close to me, it's a different quality of light than if I pull back. Likewise, if you're in your office, your studio, wherever that is that you shoot, and you're using soft boxes, for example, whether that light is far away from you or close to you it makes a huge difference in the quality of light. So if this is your light source over here, for example, and it's illuminating you, I don't have mine hot right now, but you get the idea. If you were to move it closer, like this, let me give it a little bit of angle down so it's pointed at me. But if you were to move that light source in closer, 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 it effectively becomes a bigger source, right? Like we talked about before. So taking your lights and moving them as close to you as your space will permit will give you the best quality of light. Not only will it be a little brighter to work with, but it'll be more flattering and it will fall off more beautifully. It'll just be, uh, it's really the most flattering arrangement you can make. All right, so we've talked about the size of your source. We've talked about the proximity of it, moving it as close as you can to, to your face. That may mean moving it over your computer or just on top or whatnot, depending on what your setup is or, or your camera. But um, there's another aspect that you can use to make the light more flattering as well, and that's fill. You may be familiar with this, but if you're not, fill stands for filling in the shadows. So a fill can come from many different sources. It could be, it's a reflector, generally. For me, I like to use a card like this. I like to use just foam core. And I find that I can um, adhere a post on the back and then put that on a stand and it's very easy to support it or I can just clamp it onto a stand or something and you'll see the effect of the fill when I bring it in close to me or when it goes away. See how it fills in the shadow side of my face? And you may like it filled in like that or you may prefer to have the shadow fall a little bit deeper. There's no right or wrong. It's personal preference, but I'm just showing you this so that you have this tool to play with. And you can also fill from underneath. I can come over here and catch a little of that sunshine, and that makes quite a dramatic change on the quality of the light, right? Versus just filling in where the sun is not hitting the whiteboard. Again, and if it's in close, it has a strong effect. Out far, very subtle effect. So. There you go, three things to think about in your lighting. Think about the size of your source, big versus small. Think about the proximity, the distance that your source is to the camera, and think about what you can do with fill. Now, I forgot to mention there are many different ways. Sometimes you can use a bed sheet. Uh, sometimes you can use aluminum foil crinkled up. Uh, there are many ways to make a reflector. Sometimes it's just moving closer to a white wall. Hopefully this serves you. Hopefully this improves your sensitivity to lighting and how to be flattering in front of the camera. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.